Hello, everyone, and welcome to our day 22 of 28 of our 28 day yoga challenge. My name is Antoinette Solnik. I'm grateful to get to practice with you all tonight. Tonight's practice will be a traditional yoga practice. Your equipment will be a mat, two blocks, a strap, and, uh, and something to pad your knees. So we'll get started off in child's pose tonight and, uh, and to start our practice. Let a couple more people in. As you start off in child's pose, uh, just really sinking in. So remember puppy pose with your knees hip width distance apart or child's pose with your knees out toward the edges of the mat. Our arms are long, let the forearms rest on the mat tonight so that you have a chance to just really kind of rest into this posture. I'm gonna stand up and just talk for a minute, talk you through that so that we can let some other people in as they come in. <clears throat> So as you come into where you are proprioceptively on your mat, just settling into the mat, taking a good deep inhale in and an exhale out. Let your navel come back to the spine. So as you, as you uh, come into your child's pose, just really kind of sinking in, let the heart sink in. You're pressing the forehead on the mat, just allowing your body to really settle in. You can, in that child's pose also, or the puppy pose, sway the hips from side to side so that you feel that sensation of, uh, of maybe what's happening in the hips. Really getting into the posture. Take a good deep inhale in, and then exhale out. And maybe as you inhale in and exhale out, you're able to engage your pelvic floor. So with that good deep inhale in on the exhale, engaging abdominal muscles and pelvic floor by really drawing everything in. For some of us, the pelvic floor is something that we need to release. And so if that's the case, that you allow relaxation to occur instead of tightening up. But for a lot of us, pelvic floor work is very essential and important as we age uh, because everything starts to relax. So see what you need. And if you're hearing me say tighten, then and that's not you, then you're, you're doing the opposite of it. But regardless of it, you're being mindful of your pelvic floor because it's important to us for lots of reasons. And now take your forearms off the mat. So if you were with forearms on the mat, take them off the mat. Now tense your fingertips like you're gonna play the piano and send the shoulder heads up toward the ceiling. Sink the heart a little bit lower because now you've got a little height on the shoulder. Take a good deep inhale in, exhale out. Pad the fingertips. Now walk yourself over to your right side. So we did this last night. So we're inhaling in. See if you're gonna press down with both hands just to start. As you inhale in, just lift your left arm up. It's a little bit harder to do that. You're pressing it with that right hand. You're lifting that left hand a couple of inches off the mat and then sink that left arm back. We're gonna come back to the midline. Take a good breath in and then exhale out and walk your hands over toward your left side. We're reaching longest with that right arm. Take a good deep inhale in and lift your right hand a couple of inches off the mat. And then take it off. And walk back. Or drop back further. Let's come into tabletop. Come back to knees hip width distance apart. I'm going to let somebody else in. Settle in here, allowing the head to be long, the neck to be long. And we'll come into a few cat cows as we start our traditional practice. Taking an inhale in, sway the back. Just pause here for a moment. Now sway from side to side. So you feel a little bit in the hips as you sway from side to side. Come back to your neutral spine and then start to round. Hug the belly in, look down at the floor, at the mat. Tend the fingertips like you're gonna play the piano, send the shoulder heads up, sway again. And now pad the hands, come into stillness, inhale. Let's go one breath. 
And now exhale to round, keep the hands padded, tuck that tailbone under and hug the belly in. Inhale and exhale. Remember, it can be audible, no one can hear you. Inhaling and exhale. And a deep inhale and an exhale. Come back to stillness. Let's take our left foot out and push back on the left toes. And engage that left leg by squeezing the left quadricep, buttock muscle, and hamstring. Come up onto the ball of that foot and then come over into the shoelaces part of the foot. Feel that good bend in your toes if that feels okay to you to do so tonight. Pushing up and back. Fanning the toes out as you come up and back. Gently windshield wiper your left heel over toward the left side of the mat if it feels okay to draw that right arm up. And now you're sinking into that left hip, getting that long band of muscle on the left hip will stretch there. I'm gonna let somebody else in. We're gonna fan our heel over toward the right corner of the mat. Now kick stand out your right foot. And let's come into a side angle here. So that right hand is down. And remember, you can plant your right hand on a block. We're gonna kick stand out that right foot and we're gonna take that left foot out long. Patting that left foot, we're gonna raise our left arm up. So I've got the shoelaces part of my right foot up. I'm reaching up and extending with that left arm. Let's open up, find a nice opening along the chest. Take a circle of that left wrist, give it a little break. Come back with that alignment. So really root down with that right hand, but see if you're able to lift up and find some length and really feel that left side body, then come over. And now find some extension as you start to push with the outside edge of that left foot and squeeze your left buttock, left butt cheek, and reach and extend. Now let's take that left hand to the hip and draw that right, that left foot out. Left foot is parallel with the mat. Point and flex that left foot. And take that left foot behind you. So now we're getting the outer part of the hip muscle. Let's pulse for six, five, engage your core, four, three, two, and one. Take that foot back to the midline, pulse for six, five, four, three, two, one, take it forward and pulse for six, five, four, three, two, and one. Take it back to the midline and down. Swing that left arm up and over the body. We're coming right back into tabletop. We're gonna just move the block for a minute. Take a moment to do a couple cat cows. Let's inhale in and exhale out. Good deep inhale, sway the back, exhale, draw it all in, inhale, and exhale. Let's go right over to the other side, bring your right foot out. Should feel good. Let's push back on that right calf, squeeze your right buttock, right uh, quadricep and leg, and then come up onto the ball of the foot and then over onto the toes. Just bend the toes, come up and back on that foot. Feel the sensation of freedom of being free on your mat. And then draw that right heel over toward the right side of the mat. We're gonna lift that left hand off if you want to and really feel that right hip stretch as we sink it toward the floor. And then coming back, back to your neutral zone, we're gonna kick stand out that left foot and start to pad that right foot. I'm bringing my left hand to a block. I like to have that height. It gives me a little bit better alignment and allows that right foot to be planted on the mat. We're gonna reach up now. So again, rooting down with that left arm, but it's light because we're using the core strength of that right side of the body to lift us up toward the ceiling. And we're strong now because we're in day 22. Let's take a circle with that right wrist and then start to open up the chest. So like you're gonna 
open up and say a huge hello to somebody. And then we're gonna take that right arm up and over the body. Reach and lengthen from the fingertips down to the edge of the toes, edge of that foot. And then windmill that arm down, catch your hip, and let's draw it up. So you know exactly where we're gonna go. Now set yourself up here. You're taking your navel back towards your spine. You're using your core strength to set that right foot out and parallel with the mat. We're gonna draw it behind us first. And then we're gonna pulse for six, five, four, three, two, and one. Come back to the midline and pulse for six, five. Challenge yourself to keep it to hip height. Three, two, and one, we're gonna kick, kick it forward. Now you're using your core, we're pulsing for six, five, four, three, two, and one. Draw it back, hold it here, and now bring it down. Great job, bring your arms up and over the body. We're coming back into our tabletop, but let's come off of our hands for a minute and come into camel. Tucking the toes under, feet or knees are about hip width distance apart. First, start off by tucking the tailbone under. You're squeezing the butt cheeks together. Draw the, the chest forward. Now let's bring that right arm up and the left arm up. See if you can take a gentle look up toward the ceiling. And then we're gonna take the right arm up and back. So either it can come into your right back pocket or you can find your right heel. Keep that left arm up just to start. We're gonna switch it in just a minute. We're gonna just find a link. Let's start to draw that the hips forward. So you feel a nice stretch along the front side of the body. Now let's just switch it. Take your right arm up, left arm's gonna come behind you, either in your back pocket or it's gonna to touch your left heel. And then again, you're starting to draw the hips forward. You're squeezing the butt cheeks so that that way you're using your core strength and then coming back. One more time. And this time, if you would like to come back in a full camel with both arms back, do that. Uh, or otherwise, swing the arms back, have them in your back pockets, and you're just coming forward. Forward enough so that you really feel a nice stretch or you're catching the backs of the heels and you're finding that nice arch. If you would like, you're dropping your head back and breathing as you go. And you can see how far you can go and how good that feels for you or not. So doing what resonates with you. Coming out of that posture, drawing one arm up and then the other, and then hands to prayer. We're coming back to table so I can let somebody else in. And let's come into a couple more cat cows as we take an inhale in and an exhale out. So we're rounding, we're doing a counter pose to what we've just done, inhaling and exhaling. Coming back into stillness, we're gonna take our blocks and come into a couple of lunge stretches, taking our right foot forward. We're gonna first start off by taking the right foot all the way up to the top of the mat, as far up as you can go, using your blocks in a supportive way, start to squeeze your left butt cheek as you lean forward. See how, how far forward you can get so you really feel a good front psoas, left side stretch. Now the back leg is engaged, so you've flexed that left buttock and the hamstring so that you feel the strength and stability of that back leg. Lift your right arm off. Left arm is still on the block. We're reaching up and extending, just feeling that good length and hopefully a stretch along the left side. We're coming back now and starting to straighten out that right leg. We're gonna walk the blocks back. We're here, reaching up with our chest forward, heart shining forward. Find length, good deep inhale as you exhale. We're gonna to start to hinge over that right outstretched leg. So a gentle hinge is all you need. You're gonna have a slight bend in that right knee so you're not locking it in. You can go over as far as you want. And if you wanted to walk the blocks up so that you get a deeper stretch, go there. You could point and flex your foot 
just to sense a deeper stretch if you wanted. And then walk the blocks back. And then we'll start to bend that right knee and come on back. Right knee's gonna come back to meet the left, left foot's coming forward. All the way up to the top of your mat and then you're hinging forward. So you're really feeling a nice stretch. So we're gonna come back to do a lunge, but I wanted us to stretch first. So let's take a good squeeze of that right buttock. Now, as you start to hinge forward, send the chest, shine the heart through and send the chest in a vertical way. So you're pushing through, taking a look toward the top of the mat or the front of the room, inhaling and exhaling. And then we're gonna to start to hinge backwards. So we're straightening out that left leg. We're walking the blocks back for support. Our bodies are tall and we're breathing here. This might be enough for you or you can start to hinge over that outstretched leg. Again, we're not locking in that left knee so it's straight, but you have a gentle bend, soft bend. And then that way you can get that deeper hamstring stretch. That's what we're going for. Point and flex the foot if you want to. Remember you're engaging your core. We're constantly engaging our core, but we continue to breathe. And it's that just that reminder of that because that's really what's powering us is right here in our kind of epicenter of our bodies. It's really kind of the conduit of it all, I think. And now we're gonna bend that left knee, let it come back. And then we're gonna draw that left knee back to meet the right. So let's come into a lunge now, low lunge. So we're gonna take that right foot forward again. That right knee is bent at 90 degrees. We're gonna tuck the toes of that left foot under. So you're gonna frame your right foot with the block and we're taking that right, that left knee off of the mat. Now we're in a lunge. Now see how deep you wanna go in this lunge now that you've stretched a little bit. So we've done that warm up. So just kind of sense what feels good, come up onto the ball of that left foot or not. And then let's take our right hand to our right hip. And again, engage your core and then twist. Left hand stays on the block. We're gonna take our right arm and fan it out. Reach and extend. And now we're gonna take that right arm forward. And up. Good deep inhale here. Squeeze your left butt cheek. And now take that right hand to the right hip. Now we're gonna take our right hand back to the block. We're gonna pad that left foot and we're coming into a side angle and I'm actually gonna move over so that I'm looking at you this time. So first set yourself up. So right hand's on the block and we're hinging into that right knee and then let's reach up and extend with that left arm. So you're opening up. Now we're coming to a really deep side angle. Take a circle of that left wrist and then take that left arm up and over the body. Track that right knee over toward your right elbow. So see if that right knee wanted to track itself over toward the left side of your mat. Let's, uh, let's head back over toward that right side. Left hand's gonna come to the hip now. Push off your block and here we are coming up into our warrior two stance. Let's reach up with the arms. So again, see how low you can sink. Engage your pelvic floor as you come into that. So you feel the strength and stability of the body. And then flip your front palm. Keep that right knee bent. Hopefully you're firing up the quadricep on that right leg. And let's reverse our warrior. Really get into that posture. And now start to straighten out that leg. That'll feel pretty good since we were just maxing it out a little bit. Flex that right foot. See if you're able to come back a little more. And then very slowly, we're gonna come back into that very strong warrior two. Fire up that quadricep. Start to track that right knee back over toward the right side of the mat. Hand's gonna come back to the block. Left arm's gonna come back up again and we're windmilling down and over so that we can make our way back into our lunge. I'm gonna move myself. Here we are back in the lunge. Let's drop that left knee back down again. And we're coming off of our arms, off of our hands, come on up. 
Now squeeze the left butt cheek so you feel the strength and stability. Clasp the hands together, steeple chase and send them up toward the ceiling. A little circle. We did this last night. Like you're going to paint it. So we're just stretching here and going the opposite direction. And really feel that lower back. That should feel good to you. That back left leg is squeezed, and we're going to take our hands down. Start to draw that right foot back to meet the left, right knee back, and take the left foot forward. So we're going to go right over to the other side. Tuck the toes of that right foot under, right knee's coming off the mat. Get into your lunge as deep as you want to go right now. Find your breath here and start to sink in. Track that left knee so it's hugs in toward the midline. And breathe. You can come up onto the ball, that right foot or not, your choice. And now we're going to pad that right foot. So we're coming into our side angle. Left hand's on the block, right hand is on our waist. Again, sink in as deep as it feels good to you to, you to do so in this supportive sort of way. Breathe here. Breathing in. And breathing out. Fan the hand back. And reach it forward. Fan it back. And reach it up and over. And then let's come up and get into our warrior two down on this other side. We'll find our drishti now on the left, over the left middle fingers. So we're really sinking into that left hip. Really feeling the strength of that and start to squeeze the glutes of both, both legs. Flip your front palm, keep that front knee bent, fire it up and start to come on back. And breathe here as you go. Really sink in. Start to really feel that fire of that left quadriceps, feeling the tapas of that area. And now start to straighten it out, squeeze it together, like you're scissoring the insides of the legs. And now flex that left foot, come back a little more. And then let's come on back. Warrior two, deep as you wanna go, slowly. And then let's come on down. Take your left hand to the block, right arm comes up. And now we're gonna windmill it up and over the body. We're coming back onto the ball of that right foot we're gonna drop that right knee down. Come off the hands, reach up, inhale. Clasp the fingertips together and steeple chase and send them up. Hopefully you feel a nice stretch from the hip point down toward that right kneecap. Let's take a circle, one direction, and then the other. And then let's wave the arms down. <clears throat> and then we're going to take the left knee down to meet the right. We're going to kind of come up into downward facing dog now so that we can start to move up to the top of our mat. Tucking the toes under. So we're going to be in downward facing dog for a minute. So either be in downward facing dog with us or come up and stand in Tadasana or do some variation of your own before you make your way up. We're going to be here for a minute. Fanning the hands. We're gonna tuck the toes under and start to lift the hips up if you're not already there. We're sinking the heart low, just like we did in Anahatsana, as we did in child's pose, puppy pose. And we're breathing. The knees are slightly bent and we could then start to pedal the feet if that felt good to do so. Sensing the back of the hamstrings as you pedal. You could sway the hips from side to side if you wanted to. Just feeling the sensation of the stretch. Bring the weight toward the forefinger and thumb. And then lift your left leg off the mat. Reach and extend. So without hyperextending, so you're not lifting out with that hip. You're just bringing the toes up 
So you really feel that right hamstring as you push off. And then bring that left foot down. And let's go over to the other side. Inhale with that right leg coming up. And then the right foot comes down. We're going to go one more time. Inhale, left leg comes up. This time, bend your left knee. So you're kind of opening up the hip. So that right, that left foot comes over toward the right side of the mat, right corner of the mat. And you feel a nice hip stretch, hopefully. Start to straighten that left leg and then bring it down. Let's go over to the other side. Inhale, right leg comes up. Bend that right knee. Let's take the toes over toward the right, the left corner of the mat. And now straighten that right leg. We're breathing and then come down. Slowly start to walk the feet toward the hands. And let's come up to a half lift and hold it. Hands come to the shins, gentle bend in the knee. So you really feel that stretch in the hamstring. Inhaling and exhaling. Good deep inhale. Exhale forward fold. Inhale, let's roll it up. Draw it up and rise. Reach up with the arms as you inhale. And exhale, hands come to prayer. Let's stretch a little bit next. Inhale with arms coming up and facing you. Exhaling as we take our right arm down. Just wave. Take a circle of that left wrist. Let me see if I can back up a little bit. And then let's head over to the right side. Stretching. Inhale, coming up, both arms. Exhale, down left arm. Take a little circle of that right wrist. And then let's head over to the left side. Just stretching. Come on up as you inhale. And exhale, hands to prayer. So we're at the top of our mats, inhaling. And exhaling into Dasana. Just roll the shoulders back and forward. Roll it back and forward. Inhale with arms up, reach and extend. Exhale, hands to prayer. Right knee's going to come up. With that right knee up, see if you can grow a little taller on that left side. Fan the toes of that left foot out. Look at something non-moving in front of you. Take a circle of your right ankle. And now let's kick that right leg out and hold it for three. Start to draw that chest forward, two. Kick it up a little higher and one. Take that right knee and then take the right foot back and kick back without touching down and hold it for three and two and one. Kick up a little higher. Now place it down gently into warrior one. Rise up. Good deep inhale. Exhale down that right arm. So sink into that left leg like we were doing in our warrior two. Sink into that left leg. Maybe you bring that right foot back just a little bit more. So you have a deeper lunge in this, this practice. And now start to straighten out that left leg and come into that tiny back bend. Maybe you flex that left foot. And then let's come up with both arms, inhaling. And then as we exhale, let's push up. Hands to prayer, right foot comes to meet the left, inhaling and exhaling into Dasana. Let's inhale to rise, reach and extend. Exhale, hands to prayer. The left knee is going to come up. And the toes of that right foot out. So you find that good, strong, stable base. Engage your core as you start to hinge slightly forward. Then start to bring that left leg out and hold it for three, two, and one. Bend that left knee. And then we're just kicking back and holding it there for three, two, toes are down, and one. Kick it up a little higher, then gently place it down, and then widen your stance today. Reach up, good deep inhale, sink into that right knee, and then drop that left arm down, rise up now with that right arm, and now straighten it out, flex that right foot, and reach back. Engage your core. 
Come on back. Come on back to your warrior one. Reach up and extend. And then with your breath, left foot comes to meet the right. Come on up. Good deep inhale here. And then exhale in, Tadasana. Inhaling to rise as we reach and extend. Exhaling, hands to prayer, right knee's gonna come back up. Let's go a little faster now. Inhale to rise. Exhale, kick out. Inhale. Exhale, step back. Good deep inhale as you rise. Exhale, step forward, right foot comes to meet the left. Inhaling and exhaling into Dasana. Inhaling to rise as we reach and extend. Exhaling to come to prayer, left knee's coming up. Engage your core and kick out with your breath. Inhale, drawing it back. Exhale, step back. Reach up, warrior one. Good deep inhale, spark the fingertips and exhale, step forward. Left foot comes to meet the right. Inhaling in, exhaling out. And just roll the shoulders back, roll the shoulders forward. We're gonna step out wide now as we face one another. Do a little stretch. So have your block in front of you. <clears throat> We're going to have the feet kind of parallel, but you could also have them slightly out. Start to sink down. As low as it feels good for you to do so, send the torso up. You're engaging, so you're tucking the tailbone under, and we're sitting low. So you're firing up those quadriceps again. Take a little rock back and forth, a little pulse up and down. As you're pulsing, are you squeezing your buttocks muscles? Yes, let's do that. Start to track the knees out. So you're sitting down. And now start to hinge forward, hands come onto the block whichever height you want on your block. Both hands on the block, parallel the feet now. Start to hinge in, so we're taking that right knee, bending it so we can feel that left inner thigh. And then straighten out. And then let's bend that left knee and feel that right inner thigh. And straighten out. Take your right hand to your right hip. We're gonna bend that right knee again. So you're looking over toward that right knee, left hand is down. Now, if you want to, you can draw that right arm all the way up for a deeper stretch or not. Your choice. Bring that right hand back to the hip and then down to the block. Left hand's gonna to come to the hip. We're gonna bend that left knee. Take a look over toward that left knee as you straighten out that right leg. And then if you want, you can take that left arm all the way up. We're just stretching. And then come on down. Walk the block and your hand slightly forward so you have, and start to sink back. You can let your head come in between your arms. Maybe that feels good to you. If it doesn't, just stay the way we were. We're just stretching here again. Start to come forward and then walk the block back so it comes right underneath your shoulders. We're gonna slowly roll up, hands come to the hips. Now take your feet back toward the edges of the mat because we're gonna sink down again so we can come into a couple of star postures. So here we are, bring your hands to cactus arms. We're gonna sink a little lower, as low as you can go. And then start to rise up. And as you do, you're squeezing everything. Butt cheeks, abdomen, and then come down. And then come up and squeeze. You can even squeeze your hands together. That might help. <laughs> come on down. Reach up. And come on down. Reach up. Last time. Reach up. Good job. And then bring the hands back to the hips. Toe heel the feet together. And let's come into a tree posture. Move my block. So find weight in your um on the left side. 
toe, you can have a kickstand with that right heel. That might be enough for you. Hands can come to prayer. Stay on your hips. Whatever you feel good. Or remember below the knee or above the knee, your choice. So either way, we're finding some stillness in this process. You're looking at something non-moving in front of you. Grow a little taller on that left side so that you can feel the strength and stability of that standing leg. Remember, you can create the mudra you might want to have. Now look at the symmetry too. See if you're able to fan the toes of that left foot out. Stillness and ease. Bring your hands back to prayer, however you were, and draw that right knee up so you're still on that standing leg. We're balancing here for three. We're a little taller, squeeze two and one. Point and flex your right foot. And then let's come on down. So a tree with a little twist. And now we're gonna go right over to the other side. So either a simple kickstand below the knee or above the knee, your choice. Do something different with your hands. Maybe tonight your hands go behind your back. And we're pausing here for a moment to breathe. But also creating that wider base with our right foot. And then growing a little taller so we're not hinging into that right hip but really feeling strong on it. We're not locking in the knee. A little chill, gentle bend. Take one more good breath in and out. And then start to draw that left knee up. Point and flex your left foot. Circle your left ankle. Breathe. And then set it down. Bring the feet about hip width distance apart and then either circle the hips or you can swing. Just decide kind of what feels good to you in this moment before we come down and do a little bit more legs. And of course, a plank. and then come back into stillness. Let's do a little bit more movement and then we'll make our way down. Coming in with hands to prayer, inhaling, and then we'll exhale in to Dasana. So again, start to tuck the tailbone under as you start to bring the body up, reach up and extend, inhaling. And then exhale, let's forward fold. Inhale to a half lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, roll the body up, inhaling. Exhale, hands to prayer, the right knee is coming up. Inhale as you grow taller. And exhale, step all the way back into your warrior two. Very slowly and deeply. You're all warmed up now. Windmill, windmill the arms. Sink in. Reverse your warrior. Come on back with forearm to top of thigh, barely touching. We're just reaching up with that right arm, up and over the body. Just windmill the arm. Come back to warrior two. Take your right hand to your right hip, step it forward. Inhale as you rise both arms. Exhale, hands to prayer, left knees coming up. Inhale, grow taller on that right side. And as you exhale, step all the way back very slowly into your warrior two. Warrior two arms as you inhale in and exhale out. Flip your front palm and reverse your warrior, inhaling. Exhale, right forearm to top of thigh. Left arm comes up. Windmill that left arm all the way over and up. Good deep inhale. And then exhale, hands come down to the hip. We're gonna hop that left foot forward. Left foot comes to meet the right. Inhaling with our rising hands, exhaling as we forward fold. Inhaling to a half lift. 
exhaling forward fold. Start to step your right foot back, drop your right knee down. The left knee is going to come down to meet it. We're back in tabletop. Right, left foot's going to come out long. Right hand's going to come out. We're coming into bird dog. So we're settling that left hand down and inhale as we draw the arms up. Arm, that right arm and left, left leg. Really kickstand the body so that you're coming into the midline. Your neck is long. Your toes are down. You're reaching long, finding length. As you inhale and exhale, a deep inhale and exhale. Pulse for six, five, slow tempo, four, navel back to the spine, three, two, one. Right hand, left knee down, set your left hand and right knee, right foot out on the, the corners and inhale as you lift up. Toes are down. We're lengthening the arm and the leg. We're breathing here. Our navel is back toward our spine. We're lengthening and let's pulse for six, five, four, three, two, one. Come on down, come back into child's pose, just like we started off at the very beginning of our practice, sinking back. We're resting here, forearms are on the mat, head is on the mat, taking a good deep inhale in, and an exhale out. Another good deep inhale in, just releasing that lower back and exhaling out. Take a little ball of that head on the mat, just giving that frontal lobe a little massage. And then we're gonna come off and come right on to our tummies. Let's do a little bit of legs before we come into our plank pose. So starting off by sending the elbows out toward the edges of the mat. You can place uh, one hand on top of the other, your chin on top or you can have your forehead down on the mat, your choice. Shoelace is part of the feeder on the mat. We're taking our left foot up and holding it for six. See how high you can go for five, four, three, two, and one. Bring it down. Right foot's coming up and hold it for three, five, sorry, six, five, four, three, two. And one, bend that left knee and flex that left foot. Track the left knee in and lift it up for six. Five, four, lift it a little higher. Three, two, and one. Come on down, lift up, bend that left right knee and flex that right foot and lift the right knee off the mat and hold it for six. Five, lift it up a little higher. Four, three, two, and one. Draw it down. Swim the arms down so the hands are starfish right underneath the shoulders. We're gonna come up into upward facing dog just to counter the pose. Take the elbows in toward the midline, then push yourself up. Take a good breath in and out. Squeeze the butt cheeks together and then come on down. Come all the way down. Forearms are gonna come down. We're gonna starfish the hands in front of us. Elbows right underneath the shoulders. Find your shoulder width apart. And then let's tuck the tailbone under. Really squeeze the, the buttocks muscles. I'm setting our timer up. We're gonna come in for our one and a half minute plank. So really start to first shoot the chest forward. So we're stretching forward. Tuck the tailbone under as you squeeze, tuck the feet, and then let's come up. We're coming up and then start to set yourself up. So you're hollowing out the belly as you tuck the tailbone under. Take a look at your feet as you breathe. Squeeze the butt cheeks together and hollow out the belly and find your breath here. 
You can set yourself up by shifting your weight slightly forward and focusing on your breath. Let's come into a few cleansing breaths. So take a good deep inhale in, arriving, exhale out. Inhaling as you stay present in this process and exhaling out. Another good deep inhale in, cleansing breath, exhaling out. Pushing away with the forearms and the shoulders as you continue to lift the body up. We're just past a minute now, you're doing great. Continue that real strength of that lift. Tuck the tailbone under if you've let that slide and continue your breath. We have 15 more seconds. Push away from the body. Continue that plank. We're almost there. Good deep inhale here and an exhale. Come on down. Great job. Come all the way down with your head on the mat, your, knee, your elbows out toward the edges of the mat. Take a little shimmy from side to side of the hips. And then let's swim the arms down. We're gonna do one more Shalambhasana before we go back into our stretches and then into Shavasana. So Shalambhasana, our arms are down beside us now. We're gonna take our feet off the mat. We're gonna engage the pelvic floor and the abdominal muscles as we lift our toes off the mat. And then bring the feet back down. Your forehead's down on the mat. Draw the arms off the mat, squeeze the shoulder blades together. Our arms are nice and strong now. Really reach and spark the fingertips. Engage your core and your pelvic floor by tucking the tailbone under and then coming down. Let's lift everything off now, including our head. So first the feet, tuck the tailbone under and squeeze the buttocks. Lift the hands, take the shoulder blades together. Lift the head off the mat. You're looking down at the mat. See how high you can go now, like a mermaid's tail. So you're really lifting off everything. Take a good breath in and out. Continue to lift and then come all the way down. Great job. We're gonna roll onto our backs now and do a little bit of stretching. Wonderful job. On your backs, knees are bent. Find your heels with your fingertips. Tuck your tailbone. So we start to scoop the tailbone, flattening the lower back in the mat and lifting the hips off the mat. On this first one, take that left hip up a little higher and squeeze that left side, and then alternate it with your right hip, like you're walking your hip up toward the ceiling, right and left. Your knees are about hip width distance apart, so you're going from right to left, and right to left. And keep that going as slow or fast as you wanna go, so you're engaging, those areas, and then pause, you're in the midline, your back is still off the mat, and you're gonna go up and then down halfway. So you go, again, you can go as fast or slow as you wanna go, but let's go for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Come on down slowly. Draw your right knee in and draw your left knee. In. Take a little rock back and forth from side to side. Breathe. Take your feet straight up slowly. You might need a gentle bend in your knee. Point and flex your feet. Draw your arms overhead, we're stretching. If you have your block tonight, we're gonna practice this for our abdominals. Just gonna play around with this posture tonight. 
So you have your block in between your hand. Doesn't matter how you have it. You might want to have it at its midway point. And now you're going to touch your toes and take your hands back. And touch your toes and take your hands back. Let's go for six. Five. Four. Three. Two. And one. Come on back. Point and flex. I'm going to do this one more time. Point and flex. Point and flex. And let's take the block up. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Great job. Come all the way down with your feet. And drop the block. Take opposite hand and opposite foot as you lift up. Stretch and lengthen. And then alternate. Stretch and lengthen. And then swim the arms down. We're going to catch that right knee. Draw the right knee in toward the chest. And take a circle of that right ankle. Take a good breath in and out. And we'll start to externally rotate, taking the right knee out toward the right side of the body and inhale with our left arm coming up and over. Really squeeze and lengthen, like someone's gently pulling you from the left heel and the left wrist. And then on the next breath, draw that right knee in toward the midline, come all the way across the body, catching it in your left hand, and cactus arm or T-shape out that right arm. Let your gaze go over toward the right side. Take a breath in and out. Let the belly expand and contract. Feel a nice stretch along the hip flexor of that right hip. Breathing. And drawing that right knee back into the chest, we're gonna switch it out. Take the left knee in and the right leg long. Take a circle of that left ankle. And breathe here. Start to externally rotate, taking that left knee out toward the left side of the body. Right arm's gonna come up and over. Just lengthen, again, like someone's gently pulling you from that right heel and right fingertip and you're reaching and lengthening here. Inhaling and exhaling. And then we're gonna come back with that left knee toward the midline and all the way across the body, catching it in your right hand. So T-shape or cactus arm, that left arm. Take a belly breath in and out as you look over toward that left side. Breathe here. Engaging, grounding, connecting with your breath. Come back again, both knees hug in toward the chest. And then let's send the legs long. Arms are gonna come overhead, just one last stretch, inhaling. And then on the exhale, swim them down and come into your version of Shavasana. Maybe you widen the feet toward the edges of the mat. Or tonight, if you wanted to bring your legs up the wall, your choice. Sink the body in to the mat. Let the mind starts to rest with the body. Take a quick scan and notice if you might be gripping in any parts that feel tight.
to the effects of having moved and breathed together. Knowing that for these next few minutes, you can let your body just rest. Take a good deep breath in and let the chest expand. And then as you let it fall back, Allow the shoulder heads to just roll back toward the mat. And maybe drop the shoulders away from the ears. Give yourself a quick scan. Notice if you're holding any tension in the jaw, in the neck, in the belly, the hips. Invite some release. Just settling. Our reading tonight comes from Albert Einstein. So just softening your attention to the words. He writes that everything is a miracle. There are two ways to live your life. One is as though nothing is a miracle. And the other is though as everything is a miracle. But without deeper reflection, one knows from daily life that one exists for other people. First of all, those whose smiles and well being, our own happiness is wholly dependent. And then for many, unknown to us, to whose destinies we are bound by the ties of sympathy. A hundred times every day, I remind myself that my inner and outer life are based on the labors of other men, living and dead, and that I must exert myself in order to give in the same measure as I have received and am still receiving. A human being is part of the whole. Called by us, the universe. A part limited in time and space. He experiences himself, herself, his thoughts, her thoughts, and feelings. As something separated, from the rest, a kind of optical delusion of his consciousness, a consciousness. This delusion is a kind of prison for us, restricting us to our own personal desires and to our own affection for a few persons nearest us. Our task must be to free ourselves from this prison by widening our circles of compassion, to embrace all living creatures and the whole of nature in its beauty. Only a life lived for others is worth living. There are only two ways to live your life. He says, one is though nothing is a miracle, and the other is though everything is a miracle. Take a good deep inhale in and exhale out as you receive the words. And then slowly start to make some movement to your fingers and to your toes. Coming back into 
body. Looking up, rolling over onto your right or your left side. You cradle your head and your arm and you thank yourself with gratitude for coming to your mat today. Thank you for the ability to move and breathe body and make a connection with my mind. And then as you're ready, coming up to a comfortable seat. You keep the eyes closed or the gaze soft. We finish our practice. And tonight, maybe one hand to the heart and one hand to the belly. With a good deep breath in and out. Once you make the decision to always choose happiness, the rest falls into place. Simply make mindful, loving choices and be the best that you can be every day. Take a good inhale in. And as you exhale, we'll share the word namaste. Thank you so much for sharing this day 22 with me. I look forward to our next day tomorrow, day 23 together. Namaste. Thank you so much for this practice. Grateful. Have a good night.